We shall see the king. Well, welcome we back to our third session with Pastor Brent Bushen of comes. Schoharie, New York. And this is, uh, the He's name of your church is Schoharie Valley, got it? Uh, Schoharie Valley Gospel Church. What a great name. Um, and this is our third session with Pastor Brent. And we, uh, uh, we're just having a good time discussing the gifts of the Spirit and, and the move of the Spirit in the local church. And, and uh, you know, it's been my experience through the years, uh, because of a lack of knowledge, people haven't been able to enter in and, uh, to uh, a, a true move of the Spirit in in a regular church service. Mm -hmm. and, and it may be sporadic, it may be occasional, but but uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, he says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. And uh, I think one of the... Uh, one of the detriments or one of the things that keeps people from moving in the things of the spirit mm. is simply that we're we're ignorant of how these things are to operate but uh, i've been blessed in your church you know as you've implemented a move of the spirit in your church and you've set things in proper biblical order according to first corinthians 14 uh, you've had a consistent move of the holy ghost and you've even had people that uh uh Maybe that wasn't their background, but they've jumped right in and, and given, you know, began to operate in, in tongues and, and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So yes, you know. maybe you can uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, it's, um, you know, you never know who's going to walk into church on a Sunday morning, uh, yeah. what their background is, uh, what they've been taught. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for a while I was a little hesitant, you know, like uh, worshiping in tongues and uh, singing in the spirit. People may not be familiar with that and they may just, uh, you know, I want to leave church right now. And yeah. uh, But I just, you know, I felt that I couldn't compromise the scriptures and, and we want to love people at the same time. And, you know, the Bible says to pursue love and desire spiritual sure. gifts. But, but you're saying the fear was if you were operating in these singing in the spirit and the gifts of spirit in operation, that you might chase them off before you get a chance to, uh, sure, uh, for them to get a chance to see who you really are. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and uh, uh, and I, I think that's a fear. That, that's a fear a lot of pastors have. Yeah, I so I just I just felt in my heart that uh, I had to trust the Lord with this, yeah. and that uh, He knew what He was doing, and He's given us the word for it, the scriptures, the the basis for this, and uh, if He's given us that foundation, uh, you know, I can trust Him and not not lean to my own understanding about what I think may or may not happen in a service uh, and just trust them. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, when I felt that people wouldn't receive it, I found that they, they had no problem with it Yeah. and, and received it. And uh, So in other words, you had reservations that the people didn't necessarily have. Yeah. Yes, at times, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, But you know what, as, you, as it says, you know, pursue love. If you just love people and they sense that love in church and you know i think they're just their guard is down they're more apt to receive yeah because uh, i think ultimately they are hungry for god they want to know god they want to know his presence and uh you know and the holy spirit and be acquainted with those things and uh sure but it's, it's you can't rush it you can't force it and try to control it you just uh gotta let god be god yeah and uh you know obey him yeah absolutely uh, and, uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's interesting. I, I and uh, I think uh, what you what you experience is, and uh, you know, your reservations uh, about the gifts of the Spirit in operation is what a lot of pastors have felt, and and consequently, a lot of them have just backed off totally mm -hmm. from uh, operating in uh, uh, even the simple gift of tongues and interpretation in the service and for sure they're not going to worship in tongues because what if you get people uh maybe unsaved people or or yeah. un uh, uh unlearned people maybe from a different uh religious background or denominational background mm -hmm. and they come in and they've never heard this so the fear is well what are they going to think about this but but you know the scripture really uh uh shows us uh, mm -hmm. If we can operate in this in a proper way and with good order, then uh, a lot of those fears are unfounded, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to be concerned uh, uh, concerned about them. For you know, for instance, uh, uh, Paul goes into great detail 
about the benefit of worshiping in tongues in in a church service. He begins in chapter 14 and he says, uh, uh, he that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh not to men, but to God. And so here you have, when we're worshiping and singing in tongues, we have a group of people that are uh, speaking not to the people around us, but to God. Right. And uh, Paul goes on in that chapter and says, when you do this, you edify yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you uh, praise and worship in tongues, he says you give thanks well. He says you bless with the Spirit. Uh, you're giving thanks to God. And, and um, uh, we need to keep in mind, we need to allow freedom of expression of worship. And not only that, the Bible tells us that tongues is a sign to the unbeliever. A sign of what? A sign that this is miraculous. Uh, this right. is a sign that God's in our midst. So, so rather than being afraid or fearful, what are people going to think? We we ought to approach it the way Paul approached it in First Corinthians fourteen and say, "Hey, this is something that can attract people to the church, knowing that something miraculous is going on, something absolutely, uh, absolutely. amazing is happen happening." Uh, and, uh, you know, we saw this on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Um, if you look over, turn over there real quick. Uh, I don't, well, I have a Bible, but I, I, uh, I don't know if I can find it here before you do. But Acts chapter 2 and verses uh, 12 and 13. Um, go ahead and read that if, uh, if you have it in front of you. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 12. Uh, and so they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, They are full of new wine. Yeah, so we see three things that happen when the move of the Spirit takes place. Um, and this, uh, this is very evident in, in the initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. They were all in the upper room, 120 of them. Uh, the tongues of fire sat upon each of them. They all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And we see that uh, in their midst there were Medes and Persians and, and Mesopotamians and different ones from different backgrounds. And the Bible says they all heard them praise the Lord in their own languages. That's right. And uh, so we get to this scripture in chapter 2 and verse 12. He says they were all amazed and perplexed, or the King James says, uh, in doubt, somewhere mm-hmm. in doubt. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what's the final uh, thing that they said? And, and some criticized, basically. Some, so in any move of the Spirit, uh, you're always going to have these three things. You're going to have amazement. You're going to have some perplexity or confu- you know, confusion or doubt. And then you'll have those that will criticize. So are we going to shut down a move of the Spirit in our midst just because there's a handful of people that, uh, that are critical of what we're doing? Uh, when God says, uh, these are signs to the unbeliever. These are things that I want to move in your midst. So, right. so according to 1 Corinthians 14, uh, we can have tongues prayed out. You know, Paul said, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. And he's talking in the setting, you know, in the setting of when we come together, uh, the setting of a gathering of believers. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. That's right. And I will sing with the understanding. So, mm-hmm. so we uh, uh, we don't need to keep these things back. And and I think uh, I think there has been a move amongst many churches, even full gospel charismatic churches, where so concerned, what are people going to think that we've totally eliminated mm-hmm. uh, the operation of these things in our midst. Yes, and yes. Uh, we, I don't think we need to do that. I, I think these are uh, uh, opportunities for people to say, hey, I, I want more of God. I, I, don't, yes, I, I, I don't understand this, but if this is God, I want it. Yeah, so. I think a key thing is, is and you had mentioned it before, uh, you know, good teaching on 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14, uh, that's pursuing love when you teach people. Sure, and, sure. And, uh, I mean, that's just a way to show love to people that you're concerned about what they may hear and what they may experience. Uh, but if you take the time to teach them and instruct them uh, in, in length or briefly before a service and so they know what they're going to expect, yeah, uh, what's going to take place in the service, uh, again, it just uh, makes them more open 
uh, yeah. to the move of the Spirit, and they let their guard down and just uh, let God be God. Sometimes just a 30-second explanation makes all the yeah, difference, doesn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. We're going to end this section, uh, session, and we're going to have another session here uh, uh, coming up. But let's pray, uh, Pastor Brent, Amen. and uh, uh, go ahead and pray for the people and, and uh, that are watching this, and let's believe God for a Pentecostal apocalypse <laughs> in their life. And apocalypse means revelation, and I believe people are going to have a revelation of Pentecost in their Amen. life. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we thank you for those that are watching this video. And Father, we just uh, thank you, Lord, that your spirit would just uh, move upon them. And Lord, that their hearts would be tender and open, Father, to receive these things from the Bible, shall the teachings, the Lord. And Father, because you love your we church so much, you love your people. And Father, we that you want them to have the all that you have provided for them. And uh, we thank you for it, Lord. He's uh, for the coming move of your spirit in our hearts and our lives and family and churches. Hail the blessed hour. We uh, shall see amen. the king All right. when he comes.